Coming up next, right here, only on the Fortnite Project channel, I'll be giving you guys our WWE Battleground 2016 pay-per-view review thoughts and opinions. You know what's coming up next. That's right. Roll that damn intro. Alright, so we did actually start things off with the kickoff match and where we had a SmackDown match between the Usos and Bree Stangle and overall it was a pretty good matchup for the kickoff match if you did ask me that and Bree Stangle were able to get the win, can't go wrong. I really like Bree Stangle as a tag team and that's pretty cool to see them actually get the win. Hopefully they stick together as that since they mesh well and I'm sure there's probably be a SmackDown feud. We'll see what happens with that. So, to start things off with the kickoff, that was fine. And Breeze Dango getting the win. Can't go wrong with that whatsoever. Then from there, we move on to the main card where we had the women's tag team match between Charlotte and Dana Brooke taking on Sasha Banks and their mystery tag team partner. And everyone was speculating on who it could possibly be and who would end up being the mystery tag team partner for Sasha Banks. And I had my own speculations on possibly having to maybe be Bailey. And Bailey is what we got. Yes, finally, we had some Bailey on the main roster. So I'm thinking now that she is basically on the main roster and still working the NXT matches, kind of like what we've seen where Kevin Owens being the NXT champion and dealing his feud with John Cena last year. And now, same thing with Bailey and probably with other people now on the NXT roster and on the main roster to basically do double duty if you will. We've seen it with Sami Zayn before and a couple of others I'm sure will be able to follow that and everything and what have you so there will be that I'm sure. So as far as the match goes I think it was really great I enjoyed it. Sasha Banks and Bailey were able to surprisingly get the win so that was cool and now we'll probably see Sasha Banks and Charlotte Obviously at SummerSlam for the Women's Championship, maybe even Bailey and Dana Brooke for a matchup to possibly in the future and whatever have you, depending on where Bailey goes. I'm sure probably most likely on the Raw roster if she goes on SmackDown. It really doesn't matter at this point, but the thing is, yes, we finally got some Bailey. Can't go wrong there. Then the next match will be had the Wyatt family taking on a new day. And this one basically continuing on since the Wyatt Family compound uh, battle, if you will. Not really a matchup, but just a brawl between the two. And then we had the six-man tag team match, which was actually a good match. The Wyatt Family did get their win, which is cool, before they go their own separate race besides Bray Wyatt and Eric Rowan being together and now having this. Um, depending on where things are going to go for the tag team title belts, if we're going to get a new one for SmackDown like we used to do uh, back in 2003 and stuff like that, 2002 time frame and when Stephanie was running the show and she was able to have the new titles for SmackDown, the WWE Tag Team titles and Raw had the World Tag Team titles. So maybe we'll get that. That remains to be seen. If not, then maybe we'll have another match and have it be a tag team match where we'll just have a SmackDown versus Raw match if you will. So. There could be that possibility, I'm not really too sure about that, but anything can really happen going into SummerSlam, so we'll see what happens with that. Then next, as I got the results too on my phone, where we had the US title matchup between Rusev and Zack Ryder, and this one, it was a pretty good match for what it was, Zack Ryder coming close, just a little bit, on getting the US title, but Rusev was able to come back. Sakura to try to get out of the accolade, but then he was bent backwards in a really awkward way. And then Rusev was able to retain. And then we had another debut in Mojo Rally, who was drafted to SmackDown from NXT. So now we got the Hype Bros. Don't really care for that tag team. Mojo Rally's probably going to face Rusev. 
and maybe for the US title, I, I don't really, uh, well, actually Rusev is on Raw, so now that's going to be basically uh, out of the picture and everything, so that's kind of weird how it kind of seemed like he was going to face Rusev for the US title, so uh, getting back to that, Rusev is on Raw, so, you know, things like that, it's kind of like weird to see where things are going to go, so, um, but most likely uh, the tag team of the High Falls will be together on that note, so it was a little weird how that was going to play out because it seemed like it was going to go that way, but that remains to be seen, so Rusev was able to retain the US title. Then next, which was one of the matches of the night, one of my favorite matches, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, holy shit, what a match, and basically a matchup between my good buddy Austin and I playing W2K16, and that type of match caliber was exactly that, and then some we saw uh, the vintage uh, spot where Sami Zayn goes through the ropes with that dive, and then we had a super kick by Kevin Owens, we had the spot on the apron, and we had uh, the focus of the arm and elbow uh, by Kevin Owens to Sami Zayn, so I was kind of nervous too. Uh, we also had the same thing a little bit going with Big E in his tag team match with this splash, so hopefully we have no injuries out of that as a result, as if we don't really need that. We had plenty of injuries already as it is, so hoping we don't get that, but Sami Zayn was able to maybe end the feud. They can fight forever, but uh, Sami Zayn with two, not one, but two hell of a kicks and then ending the matches, uh, set of matches or the feud in itself overall. Well, I'll let you guys decide to see if that's going to continue or not. I'm sure it probably will, knowing these two since they're both on Raw, so we'll have to wait and see. Then with this next match, which was okay, could have lasted a little bit longer with Becky Lynch and Natalia. Natalia was able to get the win, and I kind of like where she's going as a heel right now. So I'm kind of thinking then these two will probably still continue it just a little bit. And then hopefully Becky Lynch will probably make an even since they kind of do that with feuds now. If somebody loses, then somebody else will get the win and then whatever have you. So I'm sure... We'll probably get another match on SmackDown Live or whatever, so, uh, yeah, nothing really else to really say, but it was okay for what it was, uh, not really exactly my favorite matches, but I kind of wish that Becky Lynch would have gotten the win, but that's just me. Then from there, we move on to the Intercontinental Championship matchup between Darren Young and The Miz, and this one, you know, was pretty good too, okay. Uh, nothing really far too special where we had Bob Backland and Maurice getting involved and kind of basically ending the match there. So again, not too sure where this is going to go. It kind of looked like there was some more going into this, so it's kind of weird since both men are on separate brands. So I'm not too sure where things are going to go. Probably just end it there. I would assume so anyway. So for some matches that were like that, especially getting back into the United States title matchup. So it was kind of one of those weird moments, so uh, we'll see what happens with that, but at least The Miz was able to retain, I guess, and then the Intercontinental Championship stays on SmackDown with The Miz and Maurice, and to see who's going to be facing The Miz now going to SummerSlam. Then where we get into one of my other favorite matches, John Cena and Zone Cast, then we got on the opposing team, The Club, and this one was a really great back and forth matchup between the teams, it could have went either or. I'm sure we'll probably get to see that one more match from John Cena and AJ Styles at SummerSlam to see who's going to be the better man to win that one. And now John Cena and Enzo Cass were able to get their win before they go their separate ways. And same thing with the club too. And now maybe we'll have the Baylor club, we'll have Finn Baylor join with Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson and have it be the Baylor club and kind of take that role of AJ Styles. And I'm sure AJ Styles will still be a heel continue his feud with John Cena and whatever have you, so there's still a lot going on, especially a lot of questions and how things are going to be heading into SummerSlam and what matches are going to be taking place, all that stuff, just uh, overall with the match, great stuff, and John Cena and Zone Cass, you know, can't really go along with that either, but the club did try their best, I will say that. Before we get into the main event, we had the highlight reel, I thought this was going to be on the kickoff, but at least it was on 
for the pay-per-view as a whole. I don't really care for that much in terms of promos on pay-per-views, but this one wasn't really a disappointment. Randy Orton came back, we had that interaction between the two. Chris Jericho trying to get under the skin of Randy Orton, trying not to provoke him that much, but he did anyway. He got the RKO out of nowhere, so it seems like Randy was going to be a babyface going into his matchup with Brock Lesnar, and that should be an interesting match. And Chris Jericho basically saying uh, Randy Orton was avoiding Brock Lesnar all these years since the OVW days and since they had their debuts on WWE a long time ago in 2002 and stuff like that. So uh, Kyle was thinking maybe their feud would be kind of renewed a little bit and have like an impromptu matchup or something. But that's fine, we didn't get to see that since we've seen them face each other before, especially uh, with Chris Jericho's second coming and everything. So we've seen that uh, a long time ago before, in like 2007 already. So, um, just going at it as is, it was actually well worth it for the highlight reel. And Randy Orton returning was actually pretty damn cool and him being the face. So, And he's got a new t-shirt and everything, so things are looking to work out. and. We'll see what things go for him on SmackDown, since he's on SmackDown for the first time since I believe 2011, around that time frame, so it's going to be interesting. Alright, so from there we get into the main event, WWE title, Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, Triple Threat, former SHIELD members, and this one was a great match between all three members, Roman Reigns coming back, kind of got the beer going on and hoping he'll actually stay a heel. The only thing they really would need to change is his ring attire, his music, and then there you go. I think that would work wonders. Having Roman Reigns be that heel since people keep booing him already and it's kind of a weird thing to have him as a face and people are booing him doesn't really work for me. I see him more as a heel and I always enjoy him more as a tag team star than a single star. That's just me, not really a big fan of Roman Reigns. However, the match was enjoyable. They went back and forth with Seth Rollins. Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose did they all. Roman Reigns almost got the title, same thing with Seth Rollins. And then in the end, Dean Ambrose, yes, was able to retain, keep the title on SmackDown. We had the commissioners and general managers watching the match very closely with Stephanie and McFoley for Raw and Daniel Bryan and Shane for SmackDown. So now that Dean Ambrose kept the title, the title's on SmackDown, what's going to happen with Raw? Are they going to have the world title now? Are they going to have a whole new championship belt? Hopefully it would actually look like its own thing and not like the WWE title. And then we'll see. I know uh, the pictures too. Uh, I don't know he or Steven mentioned this too on his show that they were able to have um, like a wing angled silver type of belt. That was pretty cool. I did see that too. So that looks interesting. So either it'll look like that or Maybe just a world title. I know Thrash Maniac mentioned that in his video. So, anything can really happen. How do you feel about that? What do you think it's going to look like? How should it look like? All that good stuff. What are your thoughts on Battleground? I thought it was a great pay per view. Probably one of my favorite pay per views so far this year in 2016. But that's my thoughts. What are your own thoughts and opinions? Leave your comments down below. And until then, I'll catch you guys in the next video. In the next video. Whatever the hell that may be. Peace.